how to trade key retracement levels. Now, the first thing I have to cover is the two forms of strength, because when we talk about trading retracement levels, we're talking about the retracements after strength, whether that strength be to the upside or that, that strength be to the downside. Usually a burst of strength or a period of strength will be met by a retracement, meaning a pullback into that zone of strength, right? Every burst of strength will tend to lead to some form of a pullback. The $64,000 question, the key question that separates very good traders from, non, from, 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 from traders who aren't very good is the answer to this key question is when is a retracement after strength a viable retracement or when is that retracement a problematic retracement that is an indication that I should run for the hills as it were or not bother with the trace retracement. If you can, with any degree of regularity, answer that question, if you can make a distinction as to when a retracement after strength is a viable retracement, or when is a, retrace, a trace, retracement after strength a problematic event, you're on your way to really superior trading. So we have to first talk about the two forms of strength. The first form of strength is in the form of a single bar. Now, it doesn't matter what time frame you trade, whether you trade a one-minute chart, a two-minute chart, a five-minute chart, whether you are trading based off of a daily chart or a weekly chart, you pick the time frame based on the duration of trade you'd like to take. So if a trader wants to be exposed to the market anywhere between eight minutes and 16 minutes, they're going to trade a smaller time frame. If they want their trade duration to be between eight and 16 minutes, that's a two minute time frame. If they want their trade to be between, let's say, 20 minutes and 45 minutes or so, that's a five minute time frame. If they want their duration of trading time frame to be three to five to, to 10 days, that's a daily. If they want their duration of a trade to be over several months, that is a weekly time frame. And if they want several years, that's a monthly time frame. So you pick your time frame based on what duration you want your money exposed to the possibility of danger. What duration of trade do you want? So my traders are into making a living every day, if they can, every day in the market. So they're going to gravitate always to a smaller time frame like the two minute or the five minute. So my examples today are gonna to predominantly be based on the two minute chart. So assuming that this is a two minute bar, you can have a powerful surge in the form of one two minute period that produces a single bar of strength. Now this strength is powerful, it's abrupt, it's violent, it's sudden, it's a dynamic blow, all right? in one direction or another. Now you can have strength to the upside and strength to the downside. What I found is that if I teach the concept from the upside, it's easy to extrapolate what I'm talking about to the downside. So I usually don't teach it from the downside, but I want you to understand that everything I'm speaking about from the upside is reversible for the downside as well. So here's an example of single two minute powerful bar of strength. Then you have the multiple bar strength move. No individual bar is necessarily super powerful. You might have some powerful bars there, but not super powerful. But when you string the consecutive bar movement together, it forms a period of strength. So you have the one bar strength move, and then you have the period of strength, which is made up of several bars strung together. In truth, there is very little difference between the two. In fact, you can look at the multiple bar strength move as just being a more gradual form of the powerful abrupt one bar move, but they accomplish the same thing.
And for our purposes, it doesn't really matter which one we get, okay? Now, now that we have the two types of strengths that we will be looking at, let's start the introduction to the retracements because you can't talk about retracements until you first have a strength move, all right? Now, if we talk about the abrupt single bar strength move, once we have that, once our stock or anything that we trade, it doesn't, the item doesn't matter, but we're going to predominantly focus on stocks today, but this can be applied to any financial instrument. So once you have this abrupt two minute power bar move, it is highly likely that there is going to be some pullback and you're going to have to determine whether or not the pullback is a sign of trouble the pullback after the strength, the dip into the strengths zone, if you will. You're gonna to have to determine whether that pullback is healthy and should be a viable pullback or whether that pullback is the first sign of trouble and you should not touch this thing, okay? Now, I've divided this one bar powerful surge into three sections. I've divided the power surge into the top 33% into a top 33% area, a sort of middle 66% area, and of course, all the way back to the bottom, which is a 100% area. So I want you to pay very close attention to this. If after a single bar of power, your stock drops all the way back toward, doesn't have to be perfect, but toward the 100%, meaning that it has retraced nearly 100% of the green, 100% of the strength. It's come all the way back to the beginning of the power move to the upside. You've got a near 100% retracement. The odds that this stock from that 100% area, the odds of it rebounding all the way back let me get a pen here. The odds of it rebounding all the way back to the top of the strength is about one in every 10 times. You're not going to see the stock capable of going, returning all the way back after erasing all of its strength. So this is the 100% pullback. And then after that, the attempt to move up, one out of 10 times that move up will go all the way back. It's a very low odds move back. Now check this out. If you drop If you retrace back to about 66%, now these are general areas. It could be 62, you know, a little bit more, 67. You know what I'm saying. It's an area. It's not a specific line. So around that 66, around that two thirds, your odds improve of a rebound all the way back up quite considerably. You go to a 50-50 shot. So you go from almost being a guaranteed loser to, eh, I'll be right about 50% of the time if I buy, if I come into the market and I buy rich 50, 60, 66% retracement. So if I come in and buy this area, when the stock drops and starts to move back up off of a 66% area, I will be right that the stock will likely move to a new high above the strength five times out of every 10. Now with proper risk management, you can turn this into a consistent winning strategy. Why? Because your losses will be under, your loss will be, your stop will be under your buy, but your potential gain will be the new high. And so 50% of the times you'll experience the little box loss. The other 50% of the times you'll experience 
exponentially larger gains. And this is the way you stay in business forever, making sure that even if you're playing a 50-50 win-loss strategy, if the losses are much smaller than the wins, you can make a fortune with a 50-50% strategy, or win-loss ratio. Okay, now let's continue. This is very important. This concept is very important. Now, if we go on, how do I get this out of here? Let's see, clear, clear. Clear, clear all. There we go. On this next slide, you'll see that if you experience a pullback after strength about the 33% level, somewhere around the top third of the strength, and then the stock starts to move back up off of that top third, this has tremendous odds. If you come in here, boom, you're looking for that rise off of, it's been pulling back, and then the rise off of that around 33, it can be 30%, it can be 28%, it can be like 32%. You know what I'm saying. It's an area, okay? The odds of the move superseding the new high and, and, and blasting forward goes significantly higher to now eight out of 10 times. And so knowing when what your odds, odds are after a retracement is extraordinarily important. Now, the master trader, the professional trader wants to live his life playing retracements, but only certain types of retracements. Check this out. The true professional wants to live in that sweet spot Look at it carefully, traders. This is your sweet spot. This is the spot where you can experience not 50-50. We want to be a little bit better than that. We want to experience six times to nine times out of every 10. We want every time we do this 10 times, we want mathematically on average to be able to win six times on the low end. So six out of 10 all the way up to sometimes I win nine times out of 10. And if we operate in pullbacks in this sweet spot, we're going to be sure to be buying or coming into the right types of pullbacks. We're not saying that the 100% pullbacks can't go, but they go so infrequently. Why waste your time gambling there? Okay. So what's this sweet spot? I would say this sweet spot is 25% pullback to 45. All right. And again, a general range. Can it be 50? Yes. Can it be 48? Yes. You understand. It's just a zone. It's an area. It's a generalization. I just don't want you focused on the opposite. I don't want you focused on the opposite end of this all the way down. Now, here is the multiple bar retracement um, image that would work the same way. So you can have a multiple bar move up and then the stock starts to pull back. But how do you know the pullback is worth buying or if the pullback is troublesome? Well, if the pullback breaks through the sweet spot, you're starting to get into a more troublesome decline. And the bounce up, if there is one, is likely to be shallow and fail. And far too many traders buy into pullbacks that are have low odds of really continuing. The pullbacks that hang in the, in the area of that sweet spot and turn in that sweet spot 
have the best odds. We want the best odds. We want to play the pullbacks that turn back to the upside in the best odds zone. Okay. Now let's take a look at some examples. Now, each one is going to be a two minute chart. I told you, which is the dominant time frame that my traders use to earn their living in the markets. Okay. So every bar represents two minutes of trading. If there are two moving averages, you'll see the red one will be the 200 simple period moving average. And if there's another one you'll see that's blue, that's going to be the 20 period simple moving average. Those are the two dominant moving averages we use. But we're not talking about moving averages today. And I don't want them to get in the way of you looking at powerful moves and then monitoring their pullbacks. All right. So we're looking at a two minute chart of win resorts here. Okay. And what I want to pull your attention to is I want you to take a look at this multiple bar move. Now, this is one fluid bar move. I do know that in my drawing, I didn't put red bars, but you can have little small insignificant red bars in an ongoing power move. Okay. So it's as long as it's steady, as long as the red bars are not too um, they don't interrupt the flow of the momentum to the downside very much. You can pretend like they're not there and just unite the whole move. So if I unite this whole move from the start here to the top, and I imagine that it's one bar laying on its side. Now, let's do our retracement level, shall we? Let's take the... Let's take that one third level. Let's take that two thirds level. And then why don't we take that sweet spot? And there you go, right there. That's the sweet spot. That's that 25% pullback after strength. My strength has tapped out. It is now dropping back into the range of the strength move, okay? The question is, is this pullback worth a gift for me? Is this pullback a sign that I should pile into the play? Or is this pullback a sign that this stock is in trouble after this pullback? That the profit taking and the selling is crushing it? Well, if the pullback... Okay, starts to turn somewhere inside of our sweet spot, we want to buy that turn. Now, we can be more specific and say, once the green starts removing red right in the sweet spot, I'm buying that. So what do I mean by that? Check this out. Once green, see this green move here? This green move starts to remove red. I removed, I moved above red right from the sweet spot. This, the odds of this. Interesting about this thing. Let's take the very next move. Uh oh, it says my, my connection. No, let's hope we're okay. All right. Let's take the very next move up. Every move is independent of the prior move. Here's the next move, the beginning, and then the top. How do we know the top? Well, it starts to pull back in. So now we get the pull back in. All right, let's grab that sweet spot. More or less there. And as long, remember, you can be a little bit off. It's not perfect, but we don't do a lot of damage with this. And here we are off to another move back to the upside. Why? It retained the upper portion of its strength move. And that's primarily the key. If you want something very general, the pullbacks have to maintain themselves in the top 50% of their strength in order to be viable buys again. Now, guys, let me tell you how important this concept is. I have traders that make their whole living from this concept. They don't 
I have traders that specialize in trading the first strength move, capturing the first strength move of the day. And I have other traders that let the first strength move happen and they do nothing. You know what they do in the morning? They watch like this. It's good tea, by the way. And they're waiting for various stocks on their watch list to put in that first move. They're not interested in capturing the first move. They just want to say, okay, out of my 10 stocks, these two have produced strength moves off the open. Now they monitor the pullbacks of those two stocks. And whichever one starts to turn in the sweet spot, boom. You see what I'm saying? They protect themselves under the turn. All right. Remember, they protect themselves under the turn. So if we go back to this example, we're buying into the turn here. Here's the sweet spot of the move up. We're buying the turn. We're protecting ourselves below the low of the turn. So our risk is relatively small. There's the risk. And here is the reward. And so as long as your risk is big on average, as long as your risk, let's circle the risk, is smaller than the reward. I always tell my traders, your plays from buy should be upside down snowmen, you know? One, two, three. Remember how you used to do a snowman when you were, ch when you were a child? And you put the little hat up here on the, on the snowman and little eyes and remember that? Little arms, feet. All right. You want your loss to be the head of the snowman. You want those gains to be the fat, healthy part of the snowman. All right. And as long as this is what you get the majority of times, you're going to be in this game forever. And it's going to be very difficult to not be a consistent winner. All right. All right. So now let's take a look at another example here. I've got a few more I want to show you. OK, that was win. Um, here's um, I think this is Verizon, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Um, so it's not Verizon or a visa. Okay. <laughs> it's one of them. Okay. So here we have, I want you to take a look at this move. We take the beginning. You need a strength move first. Remember you can ignore little small singular red bars that do not interrupt the flow of the move. What starts, what creates the end of a move is a more enduring dip, okay? So this dip, after this multiple bar strength move, does this dip halt in the sweet zone? Yes, it does. And so one quick and dirty way is cut it in half, cut, the strength move in half and make sure that when you're buying a pullback and you're buying a turn out of a pullback, you need the turn, don't guess, you need the turn out of the pullback, you're buying the turn, boom, out of the sweet zone, above the 50% level, the turns, all right, must be above that 50% level. And the odds of another run are high. You see, traders, a stock runs and then just like any other runner, at a certain point it needs to rest. But it doesn't mean that the race is over. The race continues oftentimes after the rest, you see? But you, we have to determine is this an arrest or is it a collapse? Sometimes there are collapses and the collapses do a lot of damage by reversing so much of the strength that now any attempt to bounce is likely to fail. 
Too many traders get caught in the bounces that have high odds of failing because they don't know which bounces have the higher odds versus the lower odds. And now you know, all right? We're using the concept of percentage retracements to know. Now, here are the cues. As most of you know, when watching me, the cues are an ETF that monitors or tracks the, the NASDAQ 100 index, right? Um, take a look at all of your strength moves, all of them. There's a variety of them here, okay? We take this strength move from the bottom, okay? And so remember, let's just basically cut that move in half, quick and dirty way. And we can see that the turns happen right from the sweet zone. Boom, turn, boom, turn, boom, turn. Sometimes there's multiple attempts. As long as it doesn't break down through that sweet zone, the odds are high you're going. The odds are high that you're going, okay? Now, if we take the next move, this is the next strength move. You see, from here. Now, if we take the sweet spot, of that strength move, and as long as your turns are happening not from below the sweet spot, you're good. Same thing here, strength move, it's maintaining itself in the upper part of strength move, which suggests the next move is upward, not downward. And I will tell you that if you take this concept and when you see a stock explode one bar or multiple bars and starts to pull back, you're going to know that's a buyable pullback. This is a buy. You're going to know that is a problematic buy pullback. That is not to be touched. That's likely to fail. And just knowing that can make you an incredible trader. Knowing when a drop is a viable drop versus a problematic drop, that's like the ultimate question to be able to answer. Wow, okay? And retracements give us the ability to do that, okay? Every time the market is dropping, you've got a zillion people on, on financial talk shows with a zillion different opinions. And you can, with this concept, you're now gonna be able to look at them and say, these people have no idea what they're talking about. Because you're gonna know that this pullback is nothing wrong with it. It's in the top portion. Why is this problematic? And then there's gonna, you're gonna experience major destructive pullbacks that break the sweet zone. And people are gonna say, no, it's, a, it's an amazing buy opportunity. You're gonna know that's ridiculous. The next rally should fail. It has low odds. Not that it's impossible, but low odds. Okay, this is great. Now, let's, we can take a look at Twitter here today. Take a look at Twitter. Look at, look at your, look at your, look at, look at the strength moves. Let's just do all the strength moves. Can you see the problematic one? All right. There was no, here's the halfway mark of this strength move. Let's do it with a different color. Here's the halfway mark of this strength move. Here's the halfway mark of this strength move. And here's the halfway mark of this one. This is the problematic one. It broke down. It broke down out of the strength move. You see? And so just a quick and dirty way, strength move, cut it in half. If the pullback is lingering in the top portion of that half, you're going higher. Now, remember this thing works the same in reverse. You got a strength move down. If the move back up stays in the lower half, 
and turns, you're going lower as much as nine times out of every 10, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times out of every 10, all right? But if you get here, it's destroyed most of the weakness. And so you'll likely do something like that, okay? Now, it's a very, it's, it's actually a, a rather simple concept, but don't confuse simplicity with lack of power, all right? Here is uh, JP Morgan today, strength move up. Look at how, let's just cut it in half. Now that we cut it in half, let's grab the sweet zone, the, the sweet spot, which is a little bit higher than half. And you get the turns out of the sweet spot. All right. Now, here's something interesting. Again, nothing's 100%. Here's another strength move. But this one came almost all the way back and still went up. But it's a rather shallow one. I'm not overly surprised with it. It's shallow. When it's a little deeper, it becomes more reliable. But the shallow ones, of course, can do that. It's so shallow, okay? Just a little shallow there. But still here, strength move stays in the upper portion of the strength move. Brand new high, all right? Okay, good. I think you're getting this. I can feel it. I can feel it. Okay. Um, take a look at the various strength moves here in Home Depot today. Now, this is one strength move here. You can look at this as one here. See the pullback? All right, stays in the upper portion. We blast to a new high. Here's another strength move, but look, you break down here, which means that this is has one out of 10 times, you're gonna be able to come all the way back up here. Not gonna happen most of the time. You see, not gonna happen most of the time. How do I do this thing here? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, all right. So you don't get it, okay? You don't get it, you don't get it. And then there's the breakdown without ever coming back to the high because the damage was done. And so now with its failed attempts, the real weakness comes in, all right? Now, remember I told you you can do this on the reverse side. Take a look at the reverse side. Let me erase all of these things here. Take a look at the reverse side here. Now, see this move down? Here's a strength move, right? Cut it in half, and there's your move up, and now we're going to a new low. Now, here's another strength move, you see? Join it together, cut it in half. Here is a very shallow bounce, and you move to another new low. Bounce, move to another new low. And as long as the bottom half of strengths to the downside are maintained, the odds of new lows are very high. I hope some of you understand that this translates into a freaking fortune to know with a high degree of accuracy when a new low should happen and when a new high should happen, that's a money making machine. All right, most people are out there guessing, rolling the dice. You'll be bringing mathematical certainty to your trading, which is which is the way you're supposed to trade. Excuse you're supposed me, to be, yes. Thank you, two minutes to wrap up, please. All right, fantastic, I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Now, guys, if I can, very quickly, um, here is an example of the one bar Here's an example of the one bar strength stays in the upper portion. This is Bitcoin. 
Here you have one bar strength so far staying in the upper portion of the one bar strength, all right? Here is multiple bar strength, all right? This sort of experienced a breakdown, so we needed a rest, but you get the point, guys. This, the retracement style of trading is truly extraordinary, and it's a singular concept that can actually help you earn your whole living in the markets. You don't need a tremendous number of concepts to be making a living in the markets, all right, or to be consistently profitable.